For a few simple reaction mechanisms, we can come up with an analytical solution for the equations for how the concentrations of reactants and products will change over time. But for complex mechanisms, this isn't always possible. And in those cases, we can come up with a numerical solution. And a numerical solution doesn't give us an algebraic expression for how the concentration changes as a function of time, but it does give us the concentrations as a function of time, as a series of data points. And really, sometimes that's all we want, is to know what the concentration profile looks like for the reactants and products as a function of time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program that in MATLAB. And uh, I'll follow it up with future videos, but this one is going to be a really simple one involving a reaction that you already know the solution for, but I'll show how you can do a numerical solution that that uh, doesn't require knowing the analytical solution to get the to get the answer. Well, let's go let's go to MATLAB. Let's take a look at the the task we've set up and look at the code. So first of all, we have here a description of what we're going to do. We're going to do a reaction profile for a first order reaction, and uh, we're going to do it for a specific rate constant, and then we're going to start with. 0.5 molar of our reactant. So we're going to have reactant A, we're going to have a reaction that's first order in A, and we're going to see what happens to the concentration of A as a function of time. Okay, so let's look at what we wrote for the script. So first of all, I have this clear block, just get rid of all the variables in memory, and this isn't really necessary most of the time, and it can slow down your script, but uh, if you ever have problems and you can't figure out what's wrong with your code, put it in and you might find out that it's just the prior state of your variables messing you up. Okay, what about the next part of the code? So here you're going to put in values for all the constants. So one of the things you're going to have for a numerical solution is you have to put in actual numbers for your rate constant, for what time interval you want the reaction to run, and for the initial concentrations of all the reactants. So, uh, because it's not a general analytical solution, it's a numerical solution, so you need numbers. So, for us, we put in, we only have one reaction, so it's a one-step mechanism, so we only have one rate constant. Uh, so we're looking at a very simple example where we have a reaction that's irreversible in just one step, so one rate constant. And you know, so we said that was 0.06 reciprocal seconds. The time span just says we're going to let this reaction run from t equals 0 to t equals 30 seconds. And it's a good idea to re remind yourself what your units you're using in your code block. It's, it's common for students to make mistakes when they're doing uh, physical chemistry on, a, on using MATLAB or other uh, software to kind of forget about things like units. And so if you put it in the comments, then you, then you won't make that mistake. Okay. So we put in our rate constant in terms of reciprocal seconds. We said we're going to start at 0 seconds, go to 30 seconds. And we don't actually have to specify a time step because the solver we're going to use actually comes up with a time step for us. So we just say where we're going to end and where we start. In A0, well, we said we were going to look at some reaction where A is reacting to form some product and that it's first order in A. So we need to specify what our starting concentration of A is. So we said it's going to be 0.5 molar. And once again, we have the units up in our code if we need them. Now comes the actual solution here. So what we have to do is put in any rate equations. And what we're doing here is telling, is, is defining a function that tells us how fast A varies. Okay, and I just named that function first since it's first order. And there's... Uh, two variables in there. There's A, which is the concentration, and T, which is the time in seconds. And we're going to say that the rate of change of A is going to be the negative of the speed of the step. So the speed of the step is, since it's first order, it's just going to be A to the first times the rate constant. And uh, to see how that relates to the rate of change of A, we have to go back to our reaction and see um, what the relationship is of each variable to that step. And since A is a reactant in this step and one molecule of A is eaten up uh, for every step the reaction takes forward, we have a, just a negative one here as our coefficient. 
Okay, so the rate of the step is k times a. The rate of change of a is negative k times a, because it's a reactant. Okay, so that's the thing. You always start by defining some sort of function that tells you basically how the, uh, the rate's determined. So your, your rate law is going to be in here. Then you plug in the O45. And O45 is just a, uh, a solver for differential equations in MATLAB. So it just means ordinary differential equation. And there's more than one O solver built into MATLAB. And O45 is kind of a general purpose one. And for chemical kinetics, it's probably going to be the only one you need. Okay, so what are the arguments for ODE45? First of all, you say, what is the function that you're plugging in? So it's going to solve on this differential function, which we already defined first. You tell it over what time interval you want to solve it on, and then what the initial concentration are. And so, in general, when you solve a differential equation, you have boundary conditions, and you have to plug them in. And for us, the boundary conditions are going to be initial concentrations. Okay, so this is the input for the ODE. And the output is the box, basically, where you're going to put your results. And what we want is over the time interval of interest, we're going to have a series of t values starting at, at, at 0 and going to uh, 30. Oh, and notice I didn't mention it earlier, but I put an apostrophe here to change this to be a column vector. Okay, So we're going to have another column vector, which is going to be calculated values for a. Okay, so these are going to be values for A that will satisfy that differential equation. So it's going to give us values of T from 0 to 30 and then corresponding calculated values for the concentration such that if you take the derivative of those A values, it will match this rate equation. Okay, now notice nowhere in here have we plugged in the analytical expression for the integrated rate law for first order reactions. So you don't need to know how to integrate the rate equations to get an answer when you use numerical approach, which is its power. Okay, now in this case we know this is a first order reaction in A, it should be an exponential decay in A, but we didn't have to know that to get the answer. So we'll see if it looks like an exponential decay when we're done. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to plot temperature as our x-axis, our calculated values of concentration of A as our y-axis. And then the rest of my code is just to make the plot look nice. So I'm going to have circles for my symbols. I want the uh, line to be a little wider and the markers to be bigger so we can see them on the screen. And down here are just uh, more plot parameters labeling the x and y-axis with some units. Got to check to make sure these match what we said earlier. So yeah, we're going to use concentration and molarity, time in seconds. And these commands down here will just print it out as a higher resolution figure. This just says it's going to be a portable network graphic image. So if you want to paste your, your, your plot into Word, you want to do it at a higher resolution. So this is 300 dots per inch. So you can use a little code block like this at the end of your plots just to make them look nicer when you put them into a document. It's kind of overkill if you're just going to do them on screen, though. Okay, and then we've got to show graph. So this will pop the graph to the... Uh, the plot to the start when we uh, when we run it. So I'm going to run this code block. So if you look at this, this results in an exponential decay. And as I said, we didn't tell the computer that first order reactions decay exponentially. It just did a numerical approach to say, okay, I need to plug in values of A that will give me something where the uh, the rate of decrease of A is proportional to the amount of A. In other words, that it's first order and you get this perfect exponential decay. And if you, uh, if you use the rate constant to calculate the half time, you can find out, uh, you can actually test this, and you'll see that this gives you a half time exactly as you would expect for an exponential decay. So that is how you use a numerical approach to solve problems in chemical kinetics.